Now we come to the next talk. So I want to show you a little bit how you can debug your programs. So we have different debuggers in our environment. And I want to present to today TotalView. And TotalView is a very powerful debugger. So you not only can debug serial programs, you can also uh, debug parallel programs, so OpenMP programs and also MPI programs. So this is the reason why we present this today and not in one of the other days, because we think it fits, because uh, yeah, you also can debug parallel programs. So why to use a debug at all? So many of you might, yeah, if you write code, you always have some bugs in it. And of course, you can read the source code again and again. But in many cases, you just don't see what's the problem, what's, what's the mistake. And also enriching your, your application with a lot of printfs, especially in the parallel case, might be not the best idea to, um, yeah, to find the mistake or the bug in, in the program. And this is why we think uh, debuggers can enhance your productivity. And we recommend to use a debugger if you, if you can't find the bug another way. So who of you uh, use other debuggers or debuggers at all? Applications? Okay, some who never use the debugger? Also some. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. <coughs> so yeah, as I said, TotalView is a powerful debugger, so it has a lot of functionality and you can debug your oops, your your C or C++ program or as well as Fortran. Uh, we have it for Linux installed, but I think it's also, so there's a Windows front end available, but we don't have it here in Aachen. Um, you have also, yeah, I mentioned that you have, uh, you can debug parallel programs and then there are some advanced functionality. I want to, don't want to show this in detail today, but you can have something like memory de debugging which is quite nice. You can find, for example, um, if you have memory leaks in your program, you can find with, with this memory debugging. Then you have something like a, like a replay engine, so you can uh, step backwards in your program, which is uh, a nice feature. And you can also debug without a GUI. For example, if you have to debug uh, a big pr uh, program and the mistake or the error is only with, with a lot of processes, you can use this uh, without a GUI in an interactive bed shop. And yes, as I mentioned, normally you use it uh, as a GUI-based debugger. And some words about this session. So I don't like to have slides with uh, a lot of screenshots. So I want to try this a little bit more interactive. So if you want, uh, you can join everything I do now in the live demo. So I distributed um, a, f uh, a directory in the HPC lab accounts in the cluster, which is called live demo. And then you can follow the steps I show you. And if I'm too fast, then you can also have a look into the web page. There the same slides I present here are online with all screenshots, which I show interactively. Okay, first of all, if you have a program, just lean back and relax. And then there are some hints. If the program crashes and you don't know why, the first step is to look into the environment. Especially here in the cluster environment, there might be some limitations. For example, as you, you can find out about the environment, U, the so-called U-limits with, with the option dash A. So U-limit dash A shows you a lot of limitations of the environment. For example, the stack size could be a problem. The stack size might be too, too small for your program. This is especially true for some older Fortran or OpenMP programs, especially if you use something like, like ma many tasks or, or nested uh, OpenMP programs. The stack size might be too small, and then you can increase this with the dash S um, option. Also, problem might be, of course, the CPU time. So if you run into the CPU limit, you wonder why is my, my program always crashing after 20 minutes might be a limitation uh, in the U-limits of the CPU time. And also the address, uh, so the memory you, you are allowed to use might be a problem. And for debugging, there's another option. You I will show you in a minute. Uh, you can do a so-called post-mortem analysis. So you analyze your program after it crashes, which is a core dump. 
But to do that, you have to increase the core dump uh, file size to get the complete core dump. Basically, yeah, you get everything which was in memory in this in this file, and you can uh, load this file and see what in what state was my program just before it crashed. Okay, for debugging with the uh, with the debugger like Total View, it's important to have debugging information in your source code because otherwise you only will see the assembler code which might be a little bit hard to read in most cases. And uh, yes, try to, to um, build your application without any optimization, because it is possible in general to, to debug your code with, with optimized code, but sometimes it's hard to debug because the compiler might have optimization techniques like uh, inlining some functions, and then you might wonder why can't I step into this function, and the reason is that the function is not not there anymore because the compiler removed it to uh, yeah to improve the performance. <coughs> okay, so using uh, Total View here in Aachen is quite easy. You just have to load the, uh, the corresponding module and then uh, start the, the GUI, or you can start the GUI directly with your uh, with your application and the options. Dash A, you can specify the options which you would uh, pass to the to the uh, binary, and this is how the GUI looks like. So it's yeah, the GUI looks a little bit ugly and uh, old, but uh, actually it's it's a very very powerful debugger because you have a lot of information, and yeah, what we can see here now is first of all the to the toolbar. So for interactive debugging, you can or step through your source code step by step. Then you have a process and a thread status. So in this line, this is also very important. You see, we are at the moment in process one, in thread one, at a breakpoint that we specified. Then we have this stack trace pane, and there we see that we are at the moment in the main routine, which called the BSB PPCS routine, which calls some some other routine. So you can click on this on this line, and then you see this stack frame, and you also see the source code, and as if you want the assembly code on the right side. Okay, and that's another window where you have the the state of each process and each each thread. So this is the second window which will start, and I'll show that in a minute. And at the moment we see this process is in a breakpoint, and you also have some some other status infos, some for example errors or watch points or if it's stopped for some other reason or maybe the process is running. Okay, so breakpoints and watch points I will show you now interactively how you can set them and specify them. So I go to the live demo directory and then to the L1 example. And what we have here, I can show you, it's a very small program. And you can you have this main routine here. And yes, I have a count which is like 100,000. It's an int. Then I malloc uh, allocate the memory dynamically. And then I call an init routine. And in this init routine, I just access every field of this array. So I use this count variable and write in some value. And that's all. So some of you might already see what might be the problem with this program, because it's a very simple program. But in some cases, it's very hard to see, because you, yeah, if you have many fields and many arrays and many data, it might be hard. So what happens if I execute it? So I first Built it, and here is this is what I mentioned before. I built it without uh, optimization and with debug information included. Then I execute this program, see this output for initialization, and then I see, oh, whoops, there was a segmentation fault. So I accessed some data which is not part of the program. Okay, and now, first of all, I check the U limits. Okay, I could now increase the stack size. But I, I can tell you this will not solve the problem. So I could do that, but 
And now I will also increase the core size because I want to have a complete core file. So view limit dash C. You can specify any value you want or you can say unlimited. And then you see the core size changed. Then I rerun the program. First of all, I remove the core file I just produced. Rerun the program. And now I see I generated a new core file, which is complete now. Then I load the debugger. Start it. And yeah, this window is a little bit too small to see, I think. But basically, what I can choose now is uh, what what do I want now? So I have three three possibilities. I can interactively debug a program, so just starting the application. I can start a parallel program. I can attach to a running program, or I can debug a core file. So in this case, I choose the last options beca option because I want to debug a core file. This is a very nice feature to, to just load the core file because sometimes you might be uh, might have an application which runs for hours and then crashes for some reason. So in this case, you don't have to rerun the program and wait for hours. You can directly use this core file. Okay, then I open this GUI, then I have to choose just a core file from from the f from the disk so here's a core file and the executable so this is a fix me exe and then start the session okay now here i have this this main window and i have this state window and i see here now i have one process with one thread and it's status is error so i also see it here the segmentation violation Okay, and what I also see, so here this little arrow shows the, the line of code where I have the problem. And in this stack frame here, I see all local variables. For example, I see that i is uh, on a value like 29,000. Okay, my count is, you can just go to this variable, 100,000. So it was not possible to do all the iterations for some reason. And yes, I can also change the stack frame. For example, I can change to main. Then I see all local, all the values of the variables in main. And you also see the local variable count, also 100,000, for example. OK, a nice feature is, uh, so this is an, an array. So I have to, I can double click A. I get a new window, and then I can investigate the data. So A is a pointer, so in this case I only have this address, but I can specify, for example, first to show the first 100 elements, I have to do this typecast, which is brackets, then double click here, and now I see all the values. So all the values are initialized as I would expect, until in this case 100. Another nice tool is to investigate a big amount of data. If you have very big, big fields, you can use this tool, visualize, and then Total View will plot the data. So in some cases, if you, for example, have a numerical simulation, you can see uh, you have an expectation of your data, and you don't have to look at every value. You maybe you can see maybe there's a peak which you would not expect in the data or something like that. So it's also a nice tool. Okay, but who knows why this program crashed after 29,000 iterations instead of doing all the 100,000 iterations. So I, yeah, the source stack is very small. So here I allocate with this count variable. And then I try to initialize also with the same count variable. Hmm? 
bytes, exactly. So I allocate only 1,000 bytes, but of course a double is not only one byte, or has not the length of one byte, it's more, so I have to add here size of double. So multiply this with this count. And this is why it crashes after uh, 29,000 iterations. Okay, another possibility uh, to use total view is to use it interactive. Not this is post-mortem analysis, so I will show that very quickly. And here is the just the, the startup parameters, and I can click OK. And what I can do now is I can set a breakpoint just by clicking a line of code, for example, just before the initialization. Okay, it's very small. Here before in front of the initialization, I can press on go. And yeah, the program stops at this point. And if you look here, it says okay, I'm waiting in this breakpoint. Then I click, can click step. Step basically means I step into the function and next means I go to the next instruction. So next would be I step over in it and step is jumping into the function. So I jump into the function and now I could click next, 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 next and see, for example, here the i variable is increasing with every iteration for the loop, of course. And if I want to debug, um, or find the error in this way, I have to click like 20,000 <laughs> 20, times, which is of course not a good idea. And what I can do here is I can, for example, open this again, do this typecast again, like in this case, for example, 500, and then I scroll down, and then I can say, it so, so what, I, what I see here now, there are, so in the and this index is m uh, bigger than, than like 25. Uh, the values are still zero because they're not initialized at this moment. And what I can do now, I can set a watch point, I create a watch point here. I need to skip this. This is okay. And then I created this watch point. And now I can say, okay, continue my application. And then it runs until. Uh, the memory address is accessed the next time. So in this case, I just choose the random element and it stops after 470 uh, iterations. Okay. Okay, so this was, yes? So a breakpoint basically marks a line in the code. So it stops um, when, when reaching this line in the code. And the watch points basically stops when you access a specified memory address. So you can say, um, yeah. Yes, for example, you can specify one memory address, which is somewhere in an array or marks the begin of an array, any address you want, you can mark and say the pr uh, tell a total view to stop after accessing this, this, uh, this address. Okay. Okay. Um, now about parallel debugging. So parallel debugging might be very hard because yeah, you have many, many processes and there are some, some, might be some race conditions, some race conditions you cannot detect with total view at all. And we will learn about uh, race condition detection on Thursday, no, on Wednesday. Well, on Wednesday or, so or Thursday, I don't know. And yeah, you have to, to switch between threads or processes and you might change the behavior of the program. So it might be, po it might be the case that you can't find uh, the, the bug because you change the timing of your program. But anyway, having a total view debugger is better than have having nothing and many parallel pro so many parallel bugs can also be detected with this. So first of all, I want to give a brief overview about OpenMP and total view. I know 
most of you didn't learn OpenMP yet because it's it's tomorrow, but it's 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 more or less the same in MPI. So what you can see here now, I already mentioned. So I have an OpenMP program here, and in this case, I have five threads. So I can see this in this overview. I've started the program with five threads, and to navigate or to change the threads, you can just use here in this this GUI. You can use T plus or T uh, T minus to switch between the threads. And uh, to s so you can set a breakpoint, and now you can specify um, uh, one 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 important thing. If you have this pragma OMP parallel regions, which basically means here it starts a parallel OpenMP region, and Christian will show that tomorrow. Then it's not possible to set a breakpoint here in front of this line and then step over this instruction, this pragma. That's not possible. So if you want to debug within a parallel section, you always have to specify the breakpoint within this parallel scope. This is important if you want to debug OpenMP programs. And then you have to modify the behavior of a breakpoint. And you can just do it by right clicking it and uh, specify this. And now you can specify, okay, what, when, when to stop at this breakpoint. You can say, okay, only if one specific thread reaches this line of code, then stop, and all other threads don't stop. They just skip this, this breakpoint and don't stop at this point. Or you can say the complete process. For example, if you have a hybrid program on an MPI program, you can say this actual process has to stop on it and all other process not. Or you can say group. That basically means that all threads are Whenever one thread uh, hits this line of code, will stop at this point. Then you have something called barriers. This is similar to breakpoints, but they can help to synchronize your OpenMP program at this point. Okay, there are two startup uh, methods for to start MPI jobs. So I will go to MPI now. And basically, you can start your your MPI program as as you as you normally do it with MPI exec, then s set a specific parameter dash TV for total view, number of processes your MPI output. But this arguments really depend on the MP MPI vendor. So this is something which is not generally possible. The so MPI vendor has to implement this feature. And the advantages of this method is that you can attach or to, to processes to or to subset and de-attach to processes. This is not possible with this met method. In this method, you just specify total view, MPI, uh, then an MPI program, and then you can set up the, the parameters in a GUI. And I will show you how this looks like. So I go to the L3 example now. And first of all, I again build the application. Then I say MPI exec minus NP2 for two processes. And then I start the executable. Oops. And the program starts, and we wait a little bit, and we wait more, and we see the program, yeah, it seems to make really nothing. So, so interrupt the program, and now we use the debugger to find out what's, what's going on. So I use now total view with Excel. And now we have this window with the startup parameters, and now I go to the to the parallel tab and specify a parallel system which I want to use. So in our case, we have loaded OpenMPI as default. So I have to oops, find OpenMPI here, and then I have to specify the number of processes I want to start. So in this case, two are enough and then I can just say OK and then I can press the go button. So then the MPI program will start with two processes. Okay. 
So and again, I see the same behavior. So I see here now I'm rank zero, thread one, and the application is running. I also can see this in this overview window. You have two processes, and both are running. Okay, hmm. nothing happens. So what I can do now, I can press the halt button to interrupt the program. Okay, now I see I stopped the program manually, and what I can see now here is for rank zero, thread one, I see the stack frame here. And what I can see here is that I'm somewhere very deep in some InfiniBand libraries, so or some OpenMP libraries, I don't know. And you can click through the stack, and you see, okay, there's no source code available because you are somewhere in the in the OpenMP library. And you can see something, okay, it says barrier, but this, this barrier was called from the main function. So I can switch to the main function, and I see, okay, we are somewhere in this barrier. So rank zero is somewhere in this barrier. Okay, so basically this means rank zero is waiting for rank one. Okay, let's see what rank one is doing, and I can switch by pressing this P plus, so switch to the next process, and I see, okay, Rank 1 is also somewhere in some MPI library, but it's still in the receive state. Hmm. And unfortunately, this source window is too small to see anything, so we'll have another. Okay, let's have a look into the source code. So basically, we have this main routine, and this is doing not too much. So basically, I have uh, rank zero, and rank zero is okay. Here, it's just initializing some data, and then rank zero here uh, sends some data to every process, to every other process. So this n prox, which I get from MPI com size, some data with a specific tag to every other process. And then we have the receive, and every other rank is receiving the, the data rank uh, zero cents. And then we have this barrier. So what we saw in the debugger now is that rank zero is waiting in this barrier, and rank one is still waiting for the data. Okay. So we can use now a nice tool, which is called the call graph, the no, not the call graph, message queue graph here. And what we can see here is that there is an outstanding message from 0 to 1 with tag 99. And now we can investigate all the data. So you can see here rank 0, waiting for. Here, this is tag 99. And the problem here is, if you look on which tag MPI 0 sends, it was a different tag, 42. So this is the error here. So I have to use the same tag, and then I can fix my program. OK, so this is what I mentioned before. Um, I have this, in addition to this, parallel debugging. I have the possibility to have some memory debugging to detect memory leaks or double free errors, invalid array bounds I can found with, with this memory scape tool which is included in the total U debugger. You can have some interesting reports about the memory consumption and you can compare two runs. So how did my program change after some after I implemented some feature for example. And this is also a nice nice tool in in total view. Okay, that's basically all uh, from TotalView, and I hope yeah, you can use this tool and see that you can enhance your productivity with, with TotalView.